Hi there, my friends. God bless you. God bless you. I want to thank you all again for the recent comments that you've left on the videos. I do appreciate that. Thank you. In this video, I'm going to be teaching on Revelation chapter 17 in regard to Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I'll be going into different verses here in regard to the Ten Kings and who they really are. Now, a lot of you will know that I focus on the Jesuits of Rome. I focus on the Society of Jesus, the Order, and the Black Pope in control of the papacy and his papal empire controlling nations and multitudes and tongues across the earth. But what I've been doing recently is also going into the the roots of the papacy itself in regard to who created the Vatican and it was the Roman Empire of course and then later on they created the Jesuits to be the counter-reformation uh, but what I used to do was just primarily focus on the Jesuits but as I've said recently I've been going into the the root of the papacy who created the Vatican who created Catholicism really it was the Roman Empire and of course that was always counter-reformation it was always against true Christianity really and we read this in the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 and 6 and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the martyrs of Jesus and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration verse 7 and the angel said to me why did you marvel I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her which has the seven heads and ten horns and then we go down to verse 9 and here is the mind that has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits And then we go down to verse 12. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Verse 17, quote, For God has put into their hearts to fulfil his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Verse 18, end quote. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. I believe that there are ten bloodlines. The ten kings are in reference to ten bloodlines, Roman bloodlines, that create the papacy. And they are, of course, Babylonian and Luciferian. And they give their power unto the beast, but the beast himself, he comes from, people call it the revived Roman Empire. Or the revival of the Holy Roman Empire. That is actually correct. But the papacy was created by the Roman Empire. And the Vatican itself is really a revival of the ancient Roman Empire. But of course then we have the Holy Roman Empire. But I believe that the Ten Kings are kings that rule the earth. And they really control the entire earth because they submit their kingdoms and nations unto the beast. And they reign with the beast. Now a lot of people teach that the ten kings are, you know, the big ten, as in, you know, the earth has been split up into what known as geographical regions. So we have the ten regions of the earth, really, that govern the earth. 
but I don't believe that. What I mean is, many, many years ago, in regard to Bible prophecy, decades ago, people taught in regard to Revelation 17, in regard to the Ten Kings, that these Ten Kings were the Ten Regions of the Earth. I don't believe that. I believe that they are bloodlines. They are Roman bloodlines. And they've always controlled the Great Whore. Now, if you look into the Roman Empire, obviously it's Babylonian. And you can connect that to Greece and, well, all the way back to Egypt, in fact, with Isis and Horus and ultimately Nimrod and Samaramis. It's a Babylonian empire that's been working through history. All of these empires were Babylonian. Let's read from Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. Quote, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come here, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I mean, when you look at the Statue of Liberty itself, you're looking at Samaramis. And of course, she has the sun rays, the spikes atop her head. Well, that is the great whore. That is the great whore. I'm not saying that New York is the great whore. <laughs> you know, people try and teach that, but I don't buy that. No, but it is a symbol of the great whore. It's a statue of the great whore. Ultimately, going back to Hecate and Isis and ultimately Samaramis. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. But also, if you look into the papacy itself, you will look at Mary as a co-mediatrix, the lady of kingdoms, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. It's the same goddess as the Statue of Liberty. It's Isis. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet coloured beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns scarlet represents sin reading the book of Isaiah though your sins be like scarlet so scarlet really is a representation of sin, wickedness and iniquity and that's why it says that he has names of blasphemy I'll read that again so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet coloured beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns the seven heads we know are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth because it says that in the last verse of the chapter quote and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth Also verse 9, here is the mind that has wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So the great whore today sits upon Vatican City that rules over the kings of the earth. But I want to explain what's in reference here. You have the kings of the earth in history, as in, you know, the monarchs of history. But there are ten kings at the end of the chapter that clearly are not the same kings in verse 1 to 4. Let me explain. Verse 1. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many wars, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth I may be drunk with the wine of a fornication. Now, the papacy controlled the monarchs of the earth, the kings and queens, through, well, the threat of excommunication, really. But there are also ten kings, ten bloodlines, that have been controlling the Vatican. They have been controlling also the kings of the earth. So there is a difference between verse 2 and verse 12 in verse 2 
It describes that the papacy of the Vatican is controlled the kings of the earth. Well, to be exact, whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And then in verse 12 we read, The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. So, don't misunderstand these kings. There is a difference between the kings and monarchs that the papacy controlled through history and the ten kings that control the great whore. Now, the beast, the scarlet colour beast, is the Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. And he comes from the great whore. He comes from the papacy. He comes from that papal structure. But the scarlet colour beast and the ten kings, they will destroy the great whore. Revelation 17 verse 16, quote, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. So there are ten bloodlines controlling the earth, and they are Roman bloodlines. They go back to the ancient Roman Empire, really. And these created the Vatican, they controlled the papacy, and they give their kingdom unto the scarlet colour beast. The scarlet colour beast, he comes from the papal structure. Really, the reason why the Roman Empire created the Vatican was to really control Christianity, but also control the governments of the earth. So we have temporal power and secular power. You know, we have politics and we have religion. The Roman Empire created the Vatican to control Christianity, subdue and dominate and destroy Christianity, but then also to control politics, to control the kings and monarchs of the earth. But the ten kings with the scarlet colour beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Verse 17 is a very interesting verse, and it used to fascinate me. I'll read it, uh, verse 17 right now. For God has put into their hearts to fulfil his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled so it is God himself that has put it into the hearts of these bloodlines really to well these Roman bloodlines to give their kingdom unto the Antichrist now I don't know if they're doing that knowingly or unknowingly but it says that God sovereignly sovereignly is put into their hearts to fulfill his will and what is the will of God? For the papacy to be destroyed, of course. To be born with fire. So, we're going to see the destruction of the papacy, the destruction of the Vatican, in this generation. I believe the Jesuits really are at the top. They're at the pinnacle of this pyramid. I really believe that. They are really the all-seeing eye as in the general of the order of the sons of Leola. So that's what I believe. In regard to these ten kings that control the earth, and they have for generations and generations, and they create the papacy, they control the papacy. They are Roman bloodlines. And of course they are behind the scenes. But at the head of that system is the general of the Jesuits. So when you look at the, when you look at the general of the Jesuits, you're looking at really the one that is in control of these bloodlines and these bloodlines are all subject to the order I mean the ten kings and you know the Jesuits they are one and the same they are part of the same Babylonian brotherhood but the one that's in control is the general of the other order you see it's it's the order that controls these bloodlines that's why if you look into the creation of the Jesuits you will see the Borgias of course there were popes and there were cardinals you look at the Farnese there were cardinals they controlled the popes you know so you have this 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 creation of the Jesuits but they were created by these Roman bloodlines but the general of the order as in the black pope he controls all of these bloodlines he controls all of these Roman ancient bloodlines that's why we see the Farnese and the Borgia 
at the creation of the Jesuit order. And that's why we see that the third superior general is a Borgia. So in this video, I'm going to go into what I really believe is going on in regard to the structure. I believe that the Antichrist, the Scarlet Colour Beast, will be a black pope. He will be a superior father, a superior general, a father of the order, a Jesuit father. The black pope will be the Scarlet Colour Beast. And that is why you see, as I've said, the third superior general was a Borgia. Roman bloodline, papal bloodline, but at the same time, a black pope. A black pope. Every Jesuit provincial is under the command of the general of the Jesuits. I believe that Pope Francis today, Bigaglio, he is actually the general of the Jesuits of Rome. But it's an army, it's a militia. It's a militia. It's a papal militia. That's exactly what Napoleon Bonaparte said. He said that the general of the Jesuits is not a mere father abbot of a monastery, but he's a general of an army. And the aim of this order is power. As I was saying at the beginning of the video, my knowledge has been increasing over the years. Sometimes I would see things a certain way, and then I would do deeper research and I'd gain more revelation. And so I'd have more knowledge, and that's the way it happens. Sometimes the more that you study scripture and history, and you do research, your knowledge increases, and that's what's happened. So, you know, if you were to watch some of my videos like five years ago, ten years ago, you know, what I'm saying today is is different entirely. It's entirely different. Years ago, when I first started, <laughs> like ten years ago, it was that the black pop controlled the white pop. And then it was just, you know, the black pop is in control and he's the head of the Jesuit order. But what I've been doing recently is looking into the Ten Kings and looking into the Roman Empire itself and looking at the uh, Roman bloodlines that created the Jesuit order, that created the papacy. But today, I do believe that the Scarlet Colour Beast is the Black Pope. He is the General of the Order. And I do believe that all of these Ten Kings, just to clarify and make my point very, very clear here, I believe that all of these Ten Kings in Revelation 17, they are Roman bloodlines, subject to the Black Pope, subject to the General of the Order. And it's took me many years to get to this point. <laughs> took me many years, really. Okay, uh, I'll continue. Uh, God bless you, my friends. God bless you. I'll continue with the message. Also, just let me go on to, you know, signs and symbols. If you look at the American dollar, you know, you have the eagle, you know, holding the arrows. And you have the 13 stars atop that. I mean, those 13 stars, they are Roman bloodlines. Roman bloodlines. And of course you have the Roman eagle, and, you know, holding the arrows. And that goes back to the Roman Empire. It's the power of Rome that's been revealed. But also, then you have Egypt itself, not just the Roman Empire, but then you go into the pyramid itself and you see the Eye of Horus, so it's going back to Isis and Horus. But then also, as I've said, you have the eagle holding the arrows and the 13 stars atop that. Those 13 stars at the top, they are bloodlines, of course. They control the earth, of course. But then we have 10 kings that do, in the book of Revelation 17, well, give their power unto the beast. So what that reveals to us is that the scarlet colour beast, the Antichrist of Revelation 17, he does not come to power until, listen, until the ten kings give him their kingdoms. Let me read those verses again. They're very important. In fact, these verses really unlock this whole chapter, really. It's the key to understanding this whole chapter.
and the ten horns of which thou sawest the ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but have received power as kings in one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now we do have ten kings that control the earth, but they only control the entire earth when the beast comes to power. They will give their power and strength unto the beast. The papacy really brings forth the scarlet colour beast. And when the beast comes to power, he destroys the great whore. He comes to power through her. But when he comes to power, he destroys that papal system. It is completely and utterly destroyed. Verse 16, And the ten horns of which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. So for generations we had the great whore that controlled the monarchs of the earth, the nations of the earth, and persecuted the church of God. That was created by Roman bloodlines, of course. But then the Antichrist comes to power through the papacy, and then ultimately, you know, we have the Roman Empire that is completely resurrected by the devil to bring warfare against the tribulation saints ruled by the scarlet colour beast. But today we have the great city that reigns over the kings of the earth, that is the Vatican, of course. Now, of course, then people talk about the empire of the city. You know, you have Vatican City. Washington District of Columbia and you have uh, the Empire City of London and of course you know I mean, if you, if you, just to talk about the whim also I know I've covered it before but I'll go into it again because it is important because if you look at Washington DC itself Capitoline Hill Capitoline Hill was an ancient you know hill in Rome it's one of the seven hills of Rome Capitoline Hill and if you go to the papacy itself you see the dome and the obelisk and the same thing in Washington DC District of Columbia of course. The dome represents the womb and of course you know the obelisk represents the penis itself that you know gives seed into the womb and brings forth the man of sin. So it, it's all going back to Isis bringing forth Horus really. Uh, so that's really what it represents really. But you have this Babylonian symbolism all across the earth really in regard to the, the dome Whenever the Brotherhood are really in control, complete control, you will always see the womb displayed and the obelisk displayed, as in the dome and the obelisk. Bringing forth the man of sin, bringing forth the scarlet colour beast. You see, these bloodlines that control the earth, they're waiting for the Antichrist, they're waiting for the man of sin. I do believe this, that the earth today, the nations of the earth, are controlled by Babylonian Roman bloodlines. And they're waiting for... The Antichrist. They're waiting for the son of perdition. They're waiting for the man of sin. And when he comes, they will give their kingdoms unto him and they will destroy the papacy, of course. The papacy was really used to really bring forth the man of sin, but also deceive the nations of the earth and bring counter reformation against the Church of God to destroy true Christianity. To infiltrate governments, to overthrow governments, and of course that's why the Jesuits were created. The Jesuits really are, you know, assassins. Really, the Jesuit oath is really uh, an assassin's oath. Let's be honest about it. It's about over overthrowing everyone that stands against the papacy, everyone that is against Mystery Babylon, everyone that's against the Roman Empire, everyone that's against the Catholic Church which is what the Catholic Church really is, the Roman Empire, Mystery Babylon, everyone that comes against that and stands against that, the Jesuits were created to really, you know, remove that opposition, destroy that opposition, and also really be counter-reformation. But they also create cults, they also bring false prophets, they also bring false gospels. So the operation of the Jesuits is, it's widespread, it's not just one area 
you know. Yes, they will they will infiltrate politics. They will also, you know, work through false prophets and you know, if you go onto many satellite networks that are, you know, preaching Christianity, the vast majority of them are false prophets, trained by the order, trained by the Jesuits, trained by the sons of Leona. And of course people focus primarily on the cults. You know, like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, high level Freemasonry and so on. Well, the Jesuits control high level Freemasonry. They control Mormonism. But also the Jesuits really were created to really destroy Christianity. Bring counterfeit Christianity in regard to false gospels and false prophets. But also unify and bring together all religions under the power of the white Pope. Under the power of the papacy. So that the Vatican really, see the Vatican is in control today of the one world religion, it's in control of the one world government, it's in control of all of these false prophets and false gospels, and all governments and politics. And once they have complete control, which they have now, the Antichrist, the Scarlet Colour Beast will come to power, and then these ten kings, these Roman bloodlines that have been controlling all of this, they will then just remove the papacy, and they will have a Babylonian, Luciferian, one world government, one world religion, of course, controlled by the Scarlet Colour Beast. But he does come to power through the papacy. But going back to what was saying a while ago, I do believe that the Black Pope, the General of the Jesuits, is in control of the Order. And this Order controls the Earth. And even the ten Roman bloodlines that control the Earth, these Babylonian Luciferian Orders, these, these bloodlines... They are subject to the Black Pope. Masonry is subject to the Black Pope. Everything is subject to the General of the Order. Everything. But of course we also have many, many other Generals today in regard to the Society of Jesus. We have many High Provincials controlling the Earth. And they're all part of this Order. This structure really is a Roman, Babylonian, Luciferian Brotherhood, a Roman Babylonian Luciferian Brotherhood, and that's what the Ten Kings are. Now, the Great Whore is dressed in purple and scarlet, dressed in purple and scarlet colour. And the man of sin, he comes from the Great Whore because he's a scarlet colour beast, of course. So he rises to power through that papal structure and that papal structure today it controls Washington it controls Strasbourg it controls Westminster it controls every government upon the face of the earth they are all controlled by high-level Jesuit provincials and high-level Freemasons and also the Vatican Knights of Rome Knights of St John uh, the Knights Templar of course the equestrian order of Jerusalem of the Holy Sepulchre these three knighthoods, they also control, they are the great matches of the earth. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go on more and more, but uh, I'm just pouring my heart out in this video, because sometimes you'll find that, you know, I'll focus on one thing in regard to the Black Pope, the Jesuits, and then I'll go into the Roman Empire. Well, the Roman Empire created the Jesuits. And then people get kind of confused. They say, well, I thought the Black Pope controlled the Noble Order. Now you say the Roman Empire controls the Jesuits. What I'm teaching is this. That really, it's the Black Pope who is in control of these Roman bloodlines. That created the Roman Empire. That created the Society of Jesus. And they're Roman bloodlines. Roman bloodlines that are in control. Now, I don't really get many views on YouTube. That doesn't bother me at all. That really doesn't bother me. I'm not here to get thousands of views, you know. I'm here to just reach out to people that, well, know who I am. <laughs> and I've watched my videos many years ago. My revelation has grown. It's increasing. And as that's happening, as I get a new revelation, I'll come on YouTube and share that with you. But ultimately, their purpose is to make war with the Lamb. 
to make war with the Lamb. Revelation 17 verse 14, these shall make war with the Lamb. That's their purpose. It's to destroy Christianity. And during the Great Tribulation, they bring war against the saints, the people of God. And then at the end of the Great Tribulation, they go forth unto Jerusalem to destroy the city and people of Israel. To destroy Jerusalem and the people of Israel. And that's when Jesus Christ returns and the Bible says, The Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15, And he said to me, The waters which thou sowest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, and make her desolate and naked, and eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Okay, I'm going to bring a conclusion. It's not a long video, it's just over 30 minutes now, and I'm going to bring a conclusion. The reason why all the presidents and prime ministers and ambassadors and heads of state, the reason why they all go to the papacy is because the black pope controls the Vatican and they're all under the control of the black pope. These ten kings, these Roman bloodlines that created the Roman Empire in regard to the creation of the papacy, they're in control. They're in control. And when the final man of sin, when he comes, when the scarlet colour beast comes, the man of sin, the Bible says that a dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now that seat, of course, is the Vatican. And he has authority to rule over all nations, multitudes and tongues. But it is also a mystery Babylon. But it's also the seat of the scarlet colour beast. But that's going to be destroyed. And in the future, the seat of the beast will be at Jerusalem. It will be at the third temple. There will be a third rebuilt temple. And at that temple, the scarlet colour beast, the man of sin, will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that will bring the wrath of God upon the earth. It is not just in reference to the papacy. Yes, the seat of the beast today is the papacy. But the seat of the beast... The scarlet colour beast will be at Jerusalem. You see the temple Mount, Mount Moriah is really, uh, it represents the throne of God himself. Because when Jesus Christ returns at Jerusalem, of course he comes at Armageddon and he destroys the armies of the beast. But after that he establishes his temple and his throne. His throne upon the earth will be at the temple mount. And so that's why the man of sin, the Antichrist, goes into that rebuilt temple at Jerusalem which will take place in the future and sits in there and proclaims himself as God and sets up his abomination of desolation so really also the, the plan of these Roman bloodlines really was of course to create the Vatican and then destroy Christianity you know through you know bringing together all religions and creating false gospels and false prophets and so on but ultimately, they will destroy the Vatican and move that throne of the beast from the Basilica unto the Temple Mount in the Third Hebrew Temple. And that will really bring the wrath of God upon the earth when he proclaims himself to be God on the earth at the Temple Mount and then go forth to war against the Jewish people. That's when Armageddon comes. That's what I believe and I thought I'd bring this video just to bring... You know some teaching really on this because in my last few videos I've been talking about the Roman Empire I've been talking about the Jesuits and bloodlines and so on but also going into the history of this Babylonian religion I created a video called the Babylonian Kingdom in History and in that video there's many pictures where you can see clearly that the you can see the symbol of the Eagle the Roman Empire you can see it on the American dollar uh, clearly, you know, holding the arrows. Well, that's a symbol of Rome. It's a symbol of the power of the Roman Empire, the Empire of Rome. And of course, there are many other pictures there in regard to, you know, the fascist symbols that you see in the uh, Congress and so on, uh, which are really, you know, symbols of the power of Rome, the authority of Rome. 
to dominate the arse, to control the arse. The Roman Empire, of course. There's a lot of symbols and things in that video, but uh, anyway, conclusion, conclusion is that I believe the Ten Kings in Revelation 17 is not the geographical regions of the earth, as in, you know, the earth split into ten regions, the Big Ten, in regard to prophecy. I believe that the Ten Kings in Revelation 17 are ten Roman bloodlines. That created the Vatican, that created the Jesuit order. And I do believe the general of the Jesuits today, the general of the order, he controls the monarchies, he controls everything. And the Ten Kings will give their power unto a black pope, a general of the Jesuits. But then people say, well, how could the Black Pope be the Antichrist when the Great Horse destroys? Well, very clearly, it's obvious. He already controls the governments, he already controls all religions. So at Jerusalem, he will establish his throne, control his one world religion, one world government from the Temple Mount. And that will be his desire, really, to sit on that throne and proclaim himself as God. And he will be a general of the order. You don't need Catholicism. The scarlet colour beast, the black pop, already controls all monarchies, governments and nations, high level Freemasonry and all religions. God bless you my friends uh, and thank you for watching the video. God bless you.